internet coming through. Hello? Sam, can you hear can Red you is hear? sus now? There we go. Right, we sorted it. Oh God! Right, that's that's what you have with. That's, that's okay. So, so what was that? Was that the audio levels of me? No, I just put you through. So, for some reason, I need to go back and check OBS. The audio, the audio two track doesn't seem to be picking anything else, picking anything up. And uh, oh, I put I you, I put you on track one, and that's uh, that's now working. So, sorry, sorry for all that. That's um, absolutely terrible. Terrible first way to start, but hey, you know that. Hopefully, that's not ominous. But um, actually, that's kind of, it's just it's the way of EMG, isn't it? The things rarely go right on the first time. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I am your host. UG is here, and alongside me, I hope this time we can actually hear him. Is uh, Redis Sus? Hello, Redis Sus. How are you? Hey, UG. Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, yeah, I think yeah, you say it's kind of indicative of EMG, but I think it's also kind of. It's quite authentic in a way. I think we'll look at back on this and be like, oh yeah, that's when we knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's nice to document these these small failures as well. Um, this is true. You can... Not everything is a slick, <laughs> slickly oiled machine always, and uh, it's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, to anyone who's new, um, sadly it's people who are not, She's not Samadel. What we are basically car enthusiasts and F1 enthusiasts quite a bit. So we typically just whenever F1 is on, we like get on get on Discord and chat to each other while we watch F1 and talk about talk about how F1 is going, how the teams are going, and then just general topics about cars. So we thought we might as well bring that to everyone out who who might also be interested in cars. So um, I think without further ado, let's uh, let's move on to the first topic, which is the F1 news and. But there's actually some bad news first off is that is that the is that the schedule is a change right the australia and, and china have actually been uh, pushed back and um, because of covid related issues so let's bring this up here um yeah so is that you know, you know when people are like want to cancel something but they feel bad about it so they'll, they'll just say oh it's postponed we'll, we'll redo it we'll redo it and then they never get around to it is, is this basically like that again um is it actually we've got a date for when it's postponed until? Yes, yeah, so Australia has a date. So, like, typically Australia was the first race of the season. has actually moved down now to the 21st November. Um, China does not seem to be on on the revised schedule. Um, it seems like they're reserving the 2nd of May for it because it, it, it's very late. It's very odd that you see a TBC on an F1 calendar, but 2nd of May is still considered TV, is currently TBC. So... Um, Annoyingly, this does mean that, you know, Bahrain is now the first race on 28th of March. It's quite a long wait for F1. Normally, we'd be talking, think we'd be start talking about uh, testing. And testing has also been pushed push back now as well. So, oh, typically, we'd expect no. testing to be, what, 14th Feb? And now it's going to be, I think, 14th or 4th, well, 2nd or 1st week of March. So, yeah, we we won't even have, it's, an, it's just a extra long wait for the F1 season to start. So, it's yeah, that's great. really unfortunate because, like, I really like testing, strangely. Um, even though one of those things where people bring cars that are not, like, race spec and uh, they're not, like, it doesn't actually tell you much about the season ahead. For some reason, I just absolutely love it. I like all the stupid car launches. The like, here's the, t- here's the last year's car with the new livery. Here's a new car and a launch. <laughs> exactly, um, yeah. So it's a, it's even, always fun to comment on the new livery. Yeah, yeah, and there's there's also a guy that I follow a little bit on YouTube, and he he goes to he absolutely goes to town when these launches comes out, and he points out all the tiny little aero flicks and all the wings and all the talks about what he thinks they're all doing, and then like two weeks later, it's like yeah, no, that was just the launch livery uh, on the old car. There's nothing good about this. <laughs> like the, the actual race car is a completely different concept. <laughs> so yeah, it's like it's really pointless, funny. but it is always yeah. fun to talk about testing and see how i mean it, it is i mean uh, last year's testing we kind of did see that ferrari was struggling so that it sometimes can be indicative like um yeah it yeah insight, but... But it's, like i think last year i think mercedes themselves were sandbagging a lot and then only in the first race did we realize oh okay no mercedes are completely dominant yeah 
Do you remember back then it was rumours that Ferrari were sandbagging? Yeah, that was the rumour that Ferrari was sandbagging. And yeah. uh, it was like, oh no, this, this lack of pace is just them trying to mask how quick they're going to be. And um, no, it did turn out Ferrari really were that bad last year. <laughs> so annoying. It is. Right, well, speaking of which, uh, it, it's hard to see, with the lack of rule change, it's going to be hard to see anything but another Lewis Hamilton romp to the title and Mercedes... I, I'm going to make a prediction, and we'll probably in a few weeks' time, we'll see, a, well, late in the year, we'll see how badly wrong or right I is. Mm. I'm sorry. I reckon by, by I, will th- I will say, by Brazil, so 7th of November, Mercedes will have wrapped up the title. That is my bold prediction before the season, before any testing, before anything, this is my bold prediction. Mercedes will wrap the title up by Brazil. And Hamilton will be world champion by 21st of uh, November in Australia. Wow, you're really sticking your neck out. I'm sticking your um, neck out this early. Yeah, I mean, the way, you've did, you, the way you've said it now adds extra uncertainty because, like, all the races that are postponed slash um, cancelled, like, that's... You don't really know if that's going to happen to any, uh, any of the other of these. But basically, it's like... Yeah, you've got to factor that in as well in your predictions. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still that confident Mercedes will romp to victory, as usual. Yeah, so before I answer and give my kind of thoughts on this, is something that just crossed my mind. Has Lewis Hamilton actually signed for Mercedes yet? That's a brilliant segue, Red, because that was one, one of the things I was going to bring up. Hamilton has not yet <laughs> signed a contract, as far as I'm aware. So yeah, he hasn't signed a contract, which is very weird to say like yeah it's it, extremely it weird. weird um unless well, it's yeah it's, like... it's, it's one of those things where like if you yeah so now we're doing predictions we do have to maybe think about whether he's actually going to race or not i'm still kind of confident um that he will sign there, there must be some kind of weird in the background that he's just not happy with or Mercedes aren't happy with that's kind of I think it must be something quite obscure like something that you wouldn't necessarily guess because I think on the surface there's not really much that can go wrong um, I just feel like Hamilton doesn't seem like the kind of person who would kind of hold Mercedes ransom in terms of salary yeah you, you didn't think uh, you like too much yeah. yeah and then Mercedes like they don't want to, they want the status quo. They don't want to rock the boat. Like, those two drivers with, a, you know, a slightly evolved car is probably their best shout. Yeah. So I don't really see how from either side there's any sort of major block. Um, so there, there must be something like weird and obscure and subtle going on in the background. We're just not privy to. Oh, we have a new follower. That's uh, that's thank you for following uh, WHFZSKD. I, I have no idea how enough to pronounce your name, but thank you for following. And uh, that's um, yeah, hope you enjoy the content. Um, also, just referring to the chat, uh, Sam Adele reckons that Peza is going to be the world champion. Um, a bold prediction. A bold that is a prediction, bold Sam. prediction. Um, I think you'll find that Verstappen will probably, if there's going to be a uh, if there's going to be a challenger from someone other than Mercedes, it's probably going to be Verstappen in the Red Bull, not Perez. But, well, I mean, that's also a, another good segue to talking point is um, how do we think Perez will do in the Red Bull now that they've ousted Albon and instead gone with Sergio Perez? You hey. did do a great, you did, did great performances in the tail end of last season with Racing Point. I do actually think this is probably the most interesting point of of the twenty twenty one season. Um, if well, two two parts to it, I guess. One, if Bull can make a car that more than Verstappen can drive, and two, is Perez able to 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 do anything with that? Um, I think this is the most interesting point because that Red Bull seat, the second one, has been absolutely cursed. Um, past you few seasons uh no one seems to be able to handle the car in the way that Verstappen can yeah which you would think is kind of detrimental to Red Bull because I mean constructors they get their money from the constructors champion not from the drivers or championship so you'd think they'd want to have 
both their drivers doing really well. And for whatever, well, it seems like they, for whatever reason, only Max is getting the getting anything out of that um, out of that car. Like it, before, like Al, album Gasly, just and even before that, Kvyat, um, when Kvyat was there, yeah, true. Paired with um, Ricciardo, and they they seemed to struggle in the second seat of the Red Bull. And it's, I mean, Gasly's shown last year. Gasly's shown last year that he's a fantastic driver. And even though Albon had his critics, he, he didn't do badly when he was at Toro Rosso. Like, so it's it's very odd. So I think, yeah, you've, you're right. The, of the 20 in the season is how... how and, and, and Perez has shown, like, he's a, he's a great, great driver. He's completely outdrove Lance Stroll in the racing point. So if, if Perez does badly, then surely fingers are going to have to start pointing at Red Bull. And uh, um, Christian Horner, like, what's going on there? Because you've that's now three. Well, you can only argue four drivers, who all very range from good to very good. In Perez's case, you could say phenomenal. Even that, just have not been able to get grips with that car. Yeah, I really like Perez as a driver. Um, but part of me, part of me wants Red Bull to to mess up again. <laughs> or just continue messing up at the same level because I just feel like it's incredibly harsh on Gasly and um, what's his name Albon if for some weird reason Red Bull just get absolutely on top and produce like a wicked car and then Perez just like absolutely dominates or like you know is like a tenth off of Stappen always and then it just looks really bad on Albon and Gasly when actually it wasn't like, completely their fault like yeah maybe they could have adapted and up the car a bit a bit better but it's just like it just looks awful and like Alvin's out of a drive basically because of it yeah he's um, now the reserve feels... driver for Red Bull this, yeah. this season yeah the thing about Perez though is that I don't know I also don't think he's quite off of the top of the range I feel like um you say that he's dominated Stroll yes agreed however it's like it's Stroll um he's not that experienced even though he's been around a few years i don't think he's like that super experienced and then also i don't think we've ever seen him up against like good competition either like ridiculous competition you could say he when he was at mclaren he didn't do too well at against jensen button and that was a not a bad mclaren car i think that was the year after lewis hamilton had left for mercedes and i think uh, i think that was i think was that Vettel's third title or fourth title? I can't. I want to say third title. No, mm. actually, no, I think that was the fourth title. I think it was um, Vettel's fourth title in a row that season. And I think Ferrari were the second fastest car. And I think it was McLaren who were the third fastest car that year. And Perez was a, probably a bit disappointing um, against Button. And Button at that point was aging and probably past his prime. But yeah, that was his one. It was one, let's say, it was one good opportunity in a decent car, and he didn't really make the most of it. So it'll be interesting to see where. I mean, it's it's almost a given that Red Bull will be the second fastest car this year. So this is, I mean, if Perez doesn't, he he's in that back category of drivers that are maybe not like the top echelon, like Hamilton, Vettel. Well, I say Vettel. Maybe maybe we'll so, discuss mm, we'll discuss really? Vettel in a different episode. I think. Okay, so let's get Hamilton, Verstappen, and. Probably, I think Hamilton Verstappen are definitely the, the the pick of the bunch, and then I'd say, um, say that like Perez is maybe in that category below, like with Leclerc, Ricciardo. Um, I still think Vettel is in that club, in that sec. With def- he's definitely in that second category, if if not the first. But we'll, Vettel is probably a he is a topic that we will probably discuss in a late episode because we could talk about Vettel and Ferrari for a long, long time. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of strange actually because I've been reading. So Adrian Newey wrote a book, um, and I've been kind of half reading that a bit. And I've just read the bit where he goes through Red Bull era with with Vettel. So I might try and pick out some details from there uh, for when we discuss him. Yeah. Okay. So uh, some news that just came out is that was we did mention Jensen Button. So. Uh... Good little uh, segue here is that Jensen is now he's joined Williams in a consultancy role of some sort. Um, 
So, um, <laughs> what? okay, the official job title is Senior Advisor. So uh, it's interesting. I'm not really sure. Uh, and um, in other news, ex for Williams, is ex McLaren boss Jost Caputo has been appointed CEO of the company. So Williams have been when I was growing up and watching F1, Williams were like the, like so. I started properly watching F1 when I was about six or so, and just after like so, I think uh, Jacques Villeneuve. So this was just after the Damon Hill Jacques Villeneuve um, won the titles back to back for Williams before uh, Mick Hacken and got that double with Mercedes and um, got that double with um, McLaren. And Williams were the team, like they were the historic team that were supposed to, like the rivals of Ferrari. And if we look now where Williams are, they're, well, they are basically the Minardi now of the 2020s. <laughs> and that's, that's uh, saying something. And yeah. obviously, obviously that Frank, Frank Williams, Sir Frank Williams just says like sold the team, which is, surprising i didn't think he'd ever sell sell the team and uh, so what, what do we think that a jb jensen button can bring to the williams team and wait what do we think can, do we think they will progress from back markers or do we think they're gonna they're gonna still remain right at the back remain seat food remain at the foot of the grid yeah i don't really know i feel like those are two different questions like what can jensen button do at williams and also how will williams progress if anything I feel, I know, I'm kind of cynical about this. I really don't see what Jensen Button is really going to do. Yeah, because um, he's not... He never struck me as, like, a technical person that much. Um, I don't think he can, like, design the car or anything like that. Um, and I don't think... Because he's not, it's not like, a driving role in any sense. I don't think he can help with the setup of, of the car or things like that either. Yeah, he's not, he's not like, a backup or reserve driver. It's just... Well, it, it's not... Was not classed as that, but you'd think yeah, if, yeah. He's, if he's joining, he would be to help out George Russell and uh, Latifi. But what, what is it? Yeah, potentially, mean? it's that. It's literally just like a Nicky Lauda style role, um, Williams, where he's just like someone who's in there and done it and kind of just can hmm. just for advice, maybe. Um, I just feel like he's not he's not as experienced as as Lauda is at, in, for that kind of thing. I just feel like ugh, this is a kind of worms maybe, but I just feel like he lucked into that 2009 championship, and he, th like he's never been like absolutely dominant on just pure or pace. No, and, um, and, and even if we talk about Lauda and that role, like La Nicky Lauda was he he's too three two or three time world champion and he was team he, he worked a lot in different te different f1 teams and has been around in like not not just as a driver but as like a in team principaling and before he even took that mercedes role so i think that was that that mercedes role for him kind of made a lot of sense about what he could offer whereas jensen is i mean mainly a driver and then as a pundit like he's that's kind yeah. of what he's transitioned into so I, mean, I feel like it's just a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of like... It seems like a bit of a help. PR move. Yeah, and this is the other thing, right? It's like a brand ambassador style thing. Um, probably just to get a bit more, um, just a bit more of a spotlight on them. I also was, was reading somewhere that apparently, um, I think, I got the impression from what I was reading that uh, people think that the the team Williams, not the owners, are a little bit like still unsure about kind of the new investors and kind of where they're taking things. I think the impression that they, well, this art, I got the impression from this article that the impression was that people weren't kind of as in love with the concept as, as like the old Williams family days. So this article seemed to insinuate that he was brought in as like kind of a bridge um to, to kind of like smooth over relations between the yeah and the to, to, to exactly to kind of get their the two sides working a bit better together um which i thought made sense but why would you pick button for that um he's not like a team principal kind of guy yeah in my eyes. I mean, he's, he, even his ties to williams are a bit tenuous at best i mean yes it was <laughs> his first team but you wouldn't say that he's synonymous with williams if if anything, exactly. you'd, you'd pick someone. I, I, if you're going to pick someone to smooth over relations, it'd probably be like Damon Hill because he he's like a British world champion who won at Williams. Um, 
I can't really think of anyone else who he drivers, maybe maybe Nigel Mansell. Um, other drivers can't really think of anyone yeah. else who'd be synonymous with Williams. So it's an interesting one. I, mean, I think well, we'll what we'll watch it throughout the season and see. I mean, we'll 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 actually that's another question. Will Jensen still continue his Sky Sports role um, as a pundit, or will he be focused short and purely just on uh, just on Williams? They say in the article, like how much of his time is is on this role. Um, I get the impression that you can't be like within, can't be like working for a team and then also be a pundit like full time. That doesn't surely there's some kind of conflict of interest thing going on there. Yeah, because if, if like he can't, sure he wouldn't be able to criticize Williams in any way. Like uh, <laughs> yeah. Sky Sports, like oh yeah, yeah, if, uh, if they like. Say they say they do qualify last and finish two seconds off the pace or whatever. Can't really go and say Williams were rubbish, can he? <laughs> if he's working yeah. them, say, so. yeah, I, I, I assume that. Well, well, I guess we'll find out on the first day of the season when, whether or not he's at Sky doing punditry. I feel that I feel like that's weird though because I feel like he was very good in his Sky role. He's I mean, I don't want Sky that a lot, but I feel like. Like he's, you know, good at talking. He he knows the stuff because he was an ex-driver, and like, I think that's like a really good position for him. Yeah, he, no, he he's, he speaks very well. He's very no, he's very knowledgeable at, about the driving aspect, and he presents himself very well. So he suits Sky a lot. Um, he's, he's definitely better than some of the other commentators. They come of the other pendants they have on Sky. Uh, Johnny Herbert springs to mind as a bit. Awkward, I find <laughs> on the on the uh, on the uh, punditry there. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that's um, that's that's the most topical uh, topical news we have. We do we do have um, we could we could talk about uh, um, Alpine, I should say, is that Cyril has stepped down. Oh as, yeah, that is a good point. So we we'll probably uh, we'll quickly cover that uh, today. Um, yeah, so, it's yeah. weird. It's like so when see. So so when UG broached this topic, I was it was news to me um, that Cyril had stepped down from Alpine, which seemed really strange because, like, I think uh, reading upon it afterwards, it was something like um, Renault had this like massive presentation planned, like early January, where they were going to talk about how not only the F1 team, but like how their company was going to rebrand itself or improve over the next years or something, and obviously that included this new rebrand from uh Renault to Alpine for the F1 team but apparently like a few days before Cyril had, had disappeared <laughs> and it wasn't even mentioned in that uh presentation at all he was just absent <laughs> yeah which is very weird thing. and odd and then later yeah. it was announced that he had stepped down well now whether he stepped down or was more like more than likely asked to resign it's probably the more yeah. likely thing um but yeah, it, well, I they basically announced who's replacing him, which is a person called Davide Brivio. Apologies if I butchered that name. Um, so apparently he was with the Suzuka MotoGP team. Um, I'm not very familiar with Davide um, Brivio, um, but it, it's so it's a bit of a shame about Cyril. He's always struck me as one of those. Um, he's a bit of a, he was a bit of a character, especially on like a yeah. Drive to Survive, and he's obviously not quite like Gunter, but he was. One of the more recognisable team bosses, uh, along with Zach Brown and Christian Horner and Toto. Um, so it's a bit, it's going to be a bit sad to see him leave. But I also, it also be interesting to see how. Um, so like Ocon himself has come out and said that he's sad that Cyril stepped down. I know that um, um, Cyril was very influential in getting Ocon to, well, Ren- Renault now Alpine. Um, well, so, he's gone then. Yeah, exactly. Now he's gone. It's. Uh, <laughs> be interesting to see how yeah so unless Ocon can like pull off some massive like developments this year and like absolutely impress everyone he's gone next year uh well um yeah so I don't know I definitely agree with you in the sense that he's like a good character especially that time when Red Bull and Renault were falling out over the engine I found that quite entertaining um but I do I do get the impression that he hasn't been very good He's a good character. He's good for kind of the media aspect of F1, but not good for Renault. No, Renault haven't really progressed. Well, they they 
Renov has constantly been mid pack, really, um, which was which was I thought going to be the title of this chat show, actually the mid pack, but <laughs> we're, we're not sure what the title of this uh, title of this. Actually, yeah, is. I was gonna. Uh, that was something I actually wanted to talk about the name, but anyway, we'll put a pin in it for now. <laughs> yeah, the um, name will come later. <laughs> Yeah, well, Renault, uh, well, it's all, it's the, it's the team that's like, it's always next year that we're going to close the gap to Red Bull and become Comfort significantly next. separated in fourth from the rest of the mid pack. It, they always just fall back into it. Yeah, um, but Cyril really has, I mean, if anything, Renault have kind of fallen back, seeing that McLaren have now overtaken them and as the best of the mid, well, even McLaren and Ford, well, like, and racing race now shouldn't call them racing point anymore aston martin now have overtaken them as the um contenders in the mid pack so if i'm still going to call them force india that's I, I the thing it's force india it's, sometimes. It's, yeah it's, oh, it's so hard um <laughs> yeah hey. yeah well it's, it's a thing they always say on the, the tv program isn't it in f1 if you're not moving forward you're sorry if you're in f1 if you're standing still you're falling back I think that's what's happened to Renault. I don't. I think they've probably made improvements, but it's just insignificant compared to, compared to the other teams. Yeah, it's just yeah. not been enough. Um, speaking of Renault, do we want to cover Alonso in this episode, or do you want to? Shall we save talking about him for next time? <laughs> I think we've we've actually chatted for half about roughly half hour for about. Uh, yeah. So it's probably his time to. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move, move on. on. Apart from one thing, is I want to get my predictions in because oh, yes, you got yours. Uh, yeah, we didn't cover predictions. So, no predictions. So go ahead. I I don't know. Um, is the question. <laughs> um, I would actually want to say like difficult now because you put you, you've drawn the line in the sand kind of thing, and it's very easy to, for me to say, oh, I'm just going to say the race before, you know, fifty fifty chance, right? Um. Sam Do you still, think that it... Samuel's still sorry, sorry to cut you off, um, Red, but Samuel's still pushing the Pezza in chat. Um, Perez, of course, <laughs> who are you talking about? But no, Sam, just no, that's not happening. <laughs> uh, I think I think Hamilton will definitely win it. Mercedes will definitely win it. When um, I want to say Mercedes will win the constructors' championship earlier than you stated. I think maybe the. Mm. So uh, let me just bring up the calendar again. So I I stated twenty first of November um, at the Australian Grand Prix is when I thought Mercedes would wrap up the sorry no okay. um, I think I, I think that's when Hamilton would wrap up the title I said and I think I said seventh at Brazil is when Hamilton what will ha so what will happen if that race gets cancelled? Um, no idea yet. I think you, no, but are you, are you saying then your prediction rolls on to the next race? Yes, that's. Are you oh, saying yeah. it has to be Australia? Uh, no, no, no. I it will. My prediction is if that if Australia gets cancelled, it will just roll roll on to the next race. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say he I'm gonna say Hamilton wins it in Mexico. Mexico, thirty first of October. Yeah, and I reckon it's earlier than title. that. When do you think Mercedes will get wrap up the competitors? Yeah. It should be earlier, shouldn't it? Uh, you, it? You'd imagine it would be earlier. Yeah. To get one twos like you expect them to do. Yeah, probably like Japan then. So Japan, the tenth of October. Okay, so you've heard it yeah. here first, folks. Mercedes. I, I read, read claims that Mercedes will win the the constructors in tenth of October. Hamilton win the drivers' world championship in thirty first. Well, in thirty first of October. And uh, I and you just here claim am predicting seventh of nov for Mercedes and twenty first of nov for Hamilton. All right, and now that wraps up the F one chat we have for you today. So let's move on to probably what we're a bit more interested in is the car chat. So we have some new cars to talk about, or new or new car, or car news to talk about. So and, uh, this is um, your your bit you've, you've drawn up quite a few things that you want to talk about here uh, red so over to you yeah i mean there's a lot a lot of things that happen in the world of cars um just put a list in we're not going to go through all of them otherwise we'll be here all, we'll be here all day which i mean i yeah. wouldn't mind doing that but probably our listeners would be like no that's enough cars yeah we should try and keep this 
bite sized <laughs> by our standards. Actually okay. Watchable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, the first the first one is a, is a very sad story in my eyes. Um, it's the news of a new Mondeo. Um, I, I don't know what like around the world this is called, but in the UK, definitely, it's it's always been kind of your your standard kind of mid sized sedan or uh, saloon car from Ford, and it's been like that since since I can remember. I can remember all the generations and things. But it's been announced that, um, well, has it been announced? I'm not sure. It's been very strongly leaked that the next Mondo will, in fact, have been changed into an SUV. That is very bad news. Uh, that's, oh. that's depressing almost. It's The Mondo has been that car that's been, um, you know, just it's it's been that car that's been, it's, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just been that family car that you you you, you see on the streets, and it's just yeah, like that's that's it's just it's nice to look at. It's it's just not, it's just been that car that's been like sweet. It's been like okay, kind of yeah, it's kind of familiar and nice. Like yeah, not exciting by kind of normal standards. Like it's not a race car or anything like that. But it's just it's always been there, oh, yeah. dependable. Here's the pic. I've got the picture of it now up. Uh, and it's just, I, I mean, as SUVs go, I'll, I'll say this: as SUVs go, it's a nice, it's a nice looking SUV. Um, it's actually a very. I think the, it's got the Mondeo grill, like from the, and it's, it, it's. I'm sure. I'm sure as like a practical SUV, it'd be a brilliant, pretty a very good car. All Mondeos have been like good, good cars. It's just. It's a Mondeo. Mondeo should be a. It shouldn't be an SUV. It's that's the. It's, it goes against what a quintessential Mondeo is. It's just awful. It basically looks like if you took a Mondeo estate and kind of got a picture of it, then instead of like clicking the corner to drag in scale, you click the top one, which is dragged up. So it's just stretched <laughs> up. It does just, look. A it bit. just looks. It just looks weird and wrong and. Kind of the well, the back of it actually looks kind of weird. It looks like they've grafted two cars together. So hopefully, this isn't the final um, final design, final of shape of it. But um, it, does, it does like after like the the back door um, bit section is like it seems like a bit has just been stuck onto it. It's like um, it's it's like the, well, the three. I'm looking at the three quarter image right now. It's just like um, it's it's yeah. It's like the front the front basically up until the back door. It's looks actually kind of like a bit of a fat Mondeo. It's still decent looking, but once you've once from the back from the back door onwards, it it's it seems like another car has just been like surgically attached to it, which I think makes it look very not well, nice. I think he, I think usually that's actually literally what's happened and this might be a test for you. Maybe Oh I is think, this like a So this one is a oh, bit more of a, a blue concept. one now. Yeah yeah same. So the concept one that this is, I'm, this is the, I'm guessing the um, concept design of the car, which the back looks much nicer and doesn't have that whole stick it onto it. Which this is a, this this is actually a, a pretty good good looking car. This this, this blue SUV here. So yeah, this is what annoys me the most about this kind of thing is that like SUVs, I don't like them personally, but I can understand why people would buy them and etc so i'm not against them in theory but it's like just give it another name <laughs> yeah call it something else <laughs> another this thing, call it something else and like if you don't want to make a, a saloon car which seems to be the, the thing now just retire them on day and just have it have it be it yes like, agree. don't don't understand why they have to use these like um Legacy old names, names but yeah. kind of yeah to try and bring back nostalgia, maybe, but like on a completely different product, it's just weird to me. Um, no, kind of related to this, they also did that to the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Yeah, <laughs> the Puma Eclipse. Yeah, uh, uh, which uh, if if you're of anywhere near our generation, you'll remember from um, the Fast and Furious movies, the green one. Yes, the first green and, is, bright, is um, uh, I forget his name now. The actor. Um, Paul, uh, I think the character's name is Paul O'Connor, and then I think is uh, Brian Walker is the actor's name. The first car that you ever see on the 
Actually, actually, no, it's not quite the first card, but the first card you see he him in is that green Mitsubishi uh, ellipse. So, yeah. We also have some black ones. Yes, they had. I can't remember if they were if they were because the f the first scene of Fast and Furious was the um the heist right where they have the black cards um steal the goods from that lorry and you have that pretty admittedly very cool shot of the car going underneath the um underneath trailer, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the trailer yeah mm. I can't remember what I don't think they were ellipses I think they were I think they were Honda Accords actually but uh, what no. I, I mean, Angel Accords in a Fast and Furious movie. I mean, yeah, times have changed, haven't they? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up. That I don't think. I mean, could be wrong. I don't uh, think I'm it was Angel Accord. Um, uh, if, uh, if anyone is in chat knows, please do tell us. But uh, I'm gonna guess that's probably gonna be me or you who knows. You know, we're probably the most car nerdy guys of everyone who's well, probably. I, yeah, I'm making a big risk assuming that chat are bigger car nerds than us, but uh, are not bigger car nerds than us. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make that claim that it's unlikely. <laughs> they look like Honda Civics. Honda you, Civics. you were very close. I was close. Okay. Yeah, very very close. Uh, on the flip side, the Accord is nothing like the Civic. So. <laughs> that's a Honda. That's why I remember. <laughs> it's a Honda. Yeah. I would I would say that the shape of the car is closer to an Eclipse than an Accord. Mm. It's like the coupe version. It's not. It's well, no. What do you even call this? It's like it's not the hatchback one. Is it this? Is, is it the saloon version? I don't even know. It's the one we don't really get here in the UK very frequently. Let's have a look. Okay. Nope. Uh, it's, it's this one, isn't it? Yeah. I, I... It's not. It's not quite a hatchback. It's not. Yeah, I, I know. What you, I know what you're talking about now. It's. 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 Uh, yeah, it's a Civic EJ1. Okay. I don't think. Ever, I don't think those ever came to the UK. Uh, it must be the coupe. I think. It, I think it is the coupe. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, the Mitsubishi Back Eclipse yes. was. Uh, turned into well, I guess technically it's slightly different because I think it's called the Eclipse Cross. But still, I, why? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look just back to the Mondeo, I mean, you look if you look at what the old Mondeo looks like, this white one we've got on the screen, it's just it's a handsome car, and it's, it's it is what a saloon, it's, it is what the Mondeo should be. It's like a saloon car that is practical for the family and looks nice. It's just what the Mon the, the SUV version, it makes it's it uh, it's going for in the, going in the present and future. SUVs seem to be like the current trend um, now, especially for young families. But yeah, like you say, it's just give it a different name. Why call it a Mondeo? It's a Mon that's not what Mondeo is. Yeah, this trend is definitely definitely exists because um, it was a few years ago now that I think Ford announced that they weren't going to release any new car cars in the US at all. Like all the all the classics like the Focus and the you know all these ones weren't gonna get sold in America at all. Um Sa Sa yeah. claims he has no need for a car he uh, uses a deaf chariot. Do, do you actually uh, so, uh what type of chariot do you have Samuel? Is it a uh, four four horse drawn or two horse drawn? <laughs> Probably not gonna answer that. <laughs> anyway, it's probably not. Oh, I'd be surprised the Dark Lord actually knows how many horses are on his uh, chariot. She's probably up on a plinth, looking down, and yeah, it's like something I don't need to worry about. Like <laughs> my minions take care of that. Yeah, as the minions. Okay, um, let's probably just move on from the uh, the depressing news of the font the uh, one day uh, to. Um, okay, which, yeah. which one do you want to pick on that list to, uh, to talk about? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk about this Bugatti because I I, had, I have not heard about this this Bugatti um, Bolde. Is that how you pronounce it? Bolide. So, Bolide? so all the YouTube videos I've watched on it, they say Bolide. Bolide. Okay. Why? I think it should be called the Bolide. <laughs> Bolide. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, oh wow! It's okay. just a stupid it's, name. It's, it's so wow, this is very this is in a very aggressive design from Bugatti. Yeah. Um, also, 
before we start talking about it, that I actually don't think it looks particularly good in that livery. There's one where they're testing it, and it's like a, in a camo, red, white, blue, black kind of combo. I think it just looks amazing. Uh, this one, is it this one you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not late. Let's try and just get this. Uh... There we go. Yeah, that looks much. It's pretty, pretty cool, pretty rad. I do like uh, camo libraries. I wish, I wish companies would go with camo libraries for cars. Actually, offer them rather than just. I mean, they do it just to like kind of make press photos hard to do. But I think they do actually look pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah, generally, but like, especially this one. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm guess I, I'm guessing they chose red, white, blue for the French flag, obviously. And uh, yeah, although the blue is a little bit, the blue a bit light, or is that just is the a picture? Bit light for I think the blue is a bit light for the uh, for the French flag, but um, it could just be picture as well. Like this one, this one it does look a little bit darker in the blue. Mm. But it could be the Bugatti blue that they kind of like. Yes, that's that. true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, talk to me about this um, about the bodied. So it's a. Is it the same engine as the? Uh... Uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to be the same base engine as the uh, Chiron and all like the other special versions of that, like the Super Sport, the yeah, the, the, the Evo and all that stuff. But they've decided to make everything kind of lighter, and it's not. So I think all the other ones are of luxury cars in essence with with huge power mm. they're fast but this one's meant to be a bit more track focused and a bit more like quite say race car but definitely more race car than than the other ones the aforementioned cars um yeah and what really caught my eye was the the brake horsepower figure which is apparently 1824 what? One thousand? Wow. Okay. One thousand eight hundred. Okay. That's that's. Which is absolutely insane, given that it's the same engine as in. Yeah, how have um, they managed to extract Iran. that? With... Not really sure. I reckon they've probably just turned up the boost on the four turbos, hmm. and I think the power curve is probably really like just getting nothing, and it's all optimized for peak power. I don't know. Yeah, it's that is insane. So, like, I I can't do. Uh... On their site, it's one thousand three hundred sixty-one kilowatts. Um, I can't convert that into horsepower. I'm not. I, I have no idea how much how much horsepower that is. But it, it seems like yeah, then, that's, I think that's probably right. The next to it says one eight something. It's oh, blocked yes. by the that's part P, number. That's, um, PS. That's oh, that's PS. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I think PS is horsepower. It's uh, yeah. PS PS tends to be a little bit higher than uh, than brake horsepower. So yeah, I think you're right. In one eight three was it one eight three one? You said. 824. 284. Okay. Yeah. So that's a that's a hell of an amount. So yeah, and it's such a jump over the Chiron, which already had ridiculous power. Yeah. Um, I think that's. I don't know how much did the um the the Koenigsegg that that beat the, uh, the speed record. The, how much did that have? The Gera had. I think it was one thousand something. It wasn't like it wasn't one thousand eight hundred. Um. Let's find out what coin is it. Is it saying say Guerrero R or RS? I can't uh, find it. Amadel has said he's got three spectral nightmares. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, I found it. So it's 1,120. Hey, seems quite unbalanced for a thing, but. Eh. Yeah, for, for a chariot, that seems. Well, three is a bit of an awkward. I mean, I guess you had one on the front wheel, sorry, the left wheel, one on the right wheel, and one in the middle, but. Normally, you'd, you'd, want, you'd want something, you want an even number, surely, on the chariot. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, but... Maybe it's for increased agility. Mm, like, um, you know. Chariots are known for their agility. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to optimize, right? <laughs> uh, so the, the Agera had um, 1,124 horsepower. So that is almost. What seven hundred more effectively? Yeah, that feels like ballpark for what the Chiron had. So yeah, maybe slightly less. But yeah, that I, I just saw that number. And I just don't. I'm not even sure I believe it. 
<laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's the thing with car companies now. Um, the whole Tuatara debacle was like whether or not we actually believe believe stuff from these hypercar makers claiming pulling out numbers. Um, yeah, I mean, interviewers who haven't really heard about that. Um, I think when was it last year? Like tail end of last it was year, the tail maybe. Tail end of last year. So Shelby, um, Shelby car, com- Shelby, Shelby cars. Um, uh, basically released a um, oh let me get the SSC SS well SSC are the company which is Shelby Car Company uh, released a car called the uh, um, SSC Two Ataris and if, if you're f- familiar with Shelby they released a um, car called the Ultimate Aero back in mid two thousands or so um, and it briefly um, claimed the, the SSC Ultimate Aero briefly claimed the top speed of um, of production cars before Bugatti came along with the Veyron. So I think that was actually early 2000s, actually. I think the Veyron was 2005, and the Ultimate Aero was early 2000s sometime. But anyway, back to Shelby, um, SSE. Um, they last year released well, released footage of the of their new car, the Tuatara, which you can see images of on the screen now, uh, that claimed to go over 300 miles an hour. It, here you have actually the... YouTube, then, um, well, this is the YouTube link that's of them claiming to go 331 miles an hour. Unfortunately, you can actually see another image here saying questioning whether it was real. Um, basically, what had what people had found so, YouTubers, um, Shimi, um, and uh, I forget who the other YouTubers' name were, but they found they basically checked on the strip of road that uh, they that the Turatara went and did the top speed run. They compared it to the uh, previous record holder, which is the Agera RS, I think, or the coin, the coining egg, and um, it didn't really match up. Um, with basically, the Agera did was claiming a lower top speed, but actually did the run in, in shorter time. And when this was put to put to um, SSC, they said that oh, it wasn't the, it wasn't this. The video they showed wasn't the actual run. Uh, when people asked where's the actual run, they they SSC claimed to have lost the footage or the footage doesn't exist. And um, what they actually and then during further investigation they they found that the they there was actually a another video of them doing the run with a laptop in where you can see the laptop and the laptop is claiming the speeds and um, the speeds shown is the 331 but it's the same video of them going doing the run which so there's clearly some something wrong there uh and they shall we said they will run shall, shall we cars have said they'll redo the run because clearly something's gone wrong and uh, there's been no news of when they'll actually do this new top speed run so we don't know yeah, exactly there's also, what's going on there's also that we? thing there's also that thing where um the people who provided the GPS equipment to um, to log all this data about the speed and distance, etc. Um, there's a bit of back and forth on whether they got um, that company to kind of finalize yeah. and check their calibration of the tools that they were using. So there's also a little bit of confusion around whether any of the numbers make sense at all. Um, yes, yeah, shall, shall we said that they, the GPS data was verified and then the, the GPS company has said that they were not there to verify and that Shelby would the Shelby themselves are verifying well it was Shelby that were doing the stuff with the GPS uh, devices so it was it's very very odd and uh, it's not a good look for Shelby um uh, it really isn't I mean being shown up by YouTubers is like the it's worst very, thing very amateur happen. it's uh, um I mean not not really well maybe that's a bit harsh on YouTube because they do they do they do like they, I mean Shelby is obviously they do, very they that they work hard clearly and it's yeah and it's also good of them and if, if they hadn't done it we would just like taken their word for it and been like oh yeah this 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 is the new world's fastest production car when it may not be i mean it, it's there's like the two tire has it's got a lot going for it. it's it got super it's got good gear ratios it's looks very aerodynamic it's got great power so in theory it could probably break i mean it's got i think the, what the top speed is 278 yeah. i believe it, I, I don't I, think I've... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, okay. So I think it, it could very well 
I, I think it very well could go 280, 290. The, but the 331 is just such a huge jump. That seems like so... That That's just a massive jump to take. Like, I, I don't... Yeah, because what was the... The previous record was just over... Just over 300? No. 270. 270, yes. That's just ridiculous, right? Yeah. Because everything... Because arrow and like drag goes with the square of speed, so just a tiny bit extra top speed needs so much either better drag or uh, well, oh drag or more power. And can't imagine that car being that much better than the Koenig plug. It just doesn't. It looks kind of aerodynamic, but it also kind of doesn't in a weird way. Like you know the super, like you know the super high mileage ultra low resistance cars they all look like strange they don't look like how you would draw a car yeah and i get the impression that at that kind of speed you kind of do want it to be like weirdly bulbous in certain areas to get the flow to go right of the whole surface yeah like uh, um, the one that springs to mind is the long tail um, or the speed tail sorry um, of the uh, um mclaren it's yeah. kind of bulbous at the front and then kind of narrows at the back and and even that doesn't it's not it's not a top speed contender but it's optimized for top speed so yeah this is anyway going going back a little bit so what is your opinion on this like do you think what do you think actually happened and do you actually believe them that this this car is capable of 300 i I don't believe it's i I don't know if it's capable of 300 what what i think has happened is clearly it's just a systematic error somewhere that they believed that it's it's added however many miles an hour i mean i think someone i think i was watching a video that said that it's cons- it, it as it went through the gears it was consistently off by 20 or 30 miles an hour so right i i i and then obviously that got um that was um ex- kind of exponentially got worse as it you go as it went up the gears what is the i i think i think i think so i think it's probably is capable of I think it's capable of getting to 270, 280. I mean, just looking at the, like I said, looking at the stats, it surely, it surely do, is capable of doing that. But my, the, th- the thing is though, it's like, Shelby are not a massive re- reputable, I mean, before this, they've made one car, so they're not exactly reputable yet. Um, we, 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 we used to say this about Koenigsegg, it's like, oh, they, they're just a new upstart company. But Koenigsegg have repeatedly shown that their cars can do what it what they say on the, what they what it says on the tin mm. was with shelby like this is effectively their second car and they've kind of tarnished their reputation almost with this so anything yeah. i think they're gonna have to work extra hard to prove any of their claims now and so like so even their next even if they eventually do do a second run i think people are going to take look at them with such scrutiny that they kind of have to yeah. make sure that their second run is done to perfection so, I think they shot themselves in the foot because, like, I don't. My personal opinion is that they didn't get anywhere near three three one, and I think if they redo it, redo it properly, they're going to get three hundred at the best case. And normally that would have been such an achievement. But now it's going to be like rubbish. Yeah, I, I think um, if if they don't make to three hundred, it's not. Good. I think car. car car fans are going to be like well this is not this this is a disappointment i, I think if they make it to 300 then yeah okay they kind of redeem themselves a little bit but if it doesn't make 300 that's it's really bad it's it not really what well, is bad because it's just like you've claimed the car can do 331 but you can't even make 300 it, it's a very bad look and it also it kind of makes me believe that they might they might not do a second run and then just kind of wait for this whole thing to to sort of blow over and then just release the car and say yeah we, we we're the we're the fastest car in the world um yeah the internet never forgets the as soon as they release it they, as soon as they release it they're going to be like wait hold on didn't you say that you were going to do another run and they'll dig up the articles from like last year yeah <laughs> i mean the thing is I, I don't i don't know what their sales figures are like because i mean the, the type of people who are going to buy this are not going to watch people like us talking about it talking about these things um so they may be they may try and put the bait and switch and kind of like sell it to those guys as this is a cut fastest car make it go on production whatever and then when it does go in production yeah there'll be a big fuss from guys like us who say what what you haven't done and 
you, you still haven't proven that this car can do the 331 and then wait ages and then eventually bring out a third car well re- a new third replacement and then we'll, but i think you, you, <laughs> if i was them i would try and do the second run and get to that 300 300 mark and just do everything in our in my um, power but when you're these car kind of companies you could just sell it make the money and then be off and then that's it yeah yeah it's a sad story but it's their own fault so yeah like yeah because i remember reading like an interview with the driver of the car on that on that um run and he was saying like oh yeah i had so much more to give we could even go faster and it's like wait you've already supposedly broken the record by like 50 miles per hour and your car still has more <laughs> it's like clearly that is wrong you should be like absolutely redlining should, it exactly to get. you should be on the red line in the car uh, yeah, the car should be. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think the, when you, when you're reaching the top speed of a car, typically it's it, it it's it's going to struggle. And then when you're saying you, you've reached three three one and the car has way more to felt like it had way more to give, that's probably it probably more probably means either you've built an absolute other master masterpiece or there's some there's something wrong with your testing. <laughs> I think they've just gone out and bought some some GPS equipment, read the manual once, and not actually appreciated like how fine and how like accurate you need to be with the calibrations and things. Yeah, I think I think they probably just re- they just thought it was like a con- consumer product where you just kind of boot it up and put it in the car and then it does what it's supposed to do. Um, and they just it's not that kind of equipment. You do need to calibrate it properly, and they've just set it up once, run it. It's given them an incorrect figure. They've assumed that it's a correct figure. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact that there wasn't anyone independent there to verify kind of, in my, it, it kind of nullifies the whole thing, right? You, you need, if you're doing these kind of things, you need someone independent there to verify the results and maybe even check the set. You, you want a person, you, you almost, you'd almost do want someone from that, or from the GPS company there to make sure that the equipment is completely set up correctly so that it doesn't yeah produce something like this uh, that's actually a good question because like what so if you were set up like a guinness world records attempt at something kind of do need like the relevant kind of checks and people there weird that they maybe they did but they, they just didn't check it well enough okay um well, we've actually been streaming for an hour now. So, we, do we want to end us end it there, or do we want to talk about one more thing? Maybe, a, maybe on a happier note, anything we want to, any any happy thing we want to. We don't really want to end it on a sad story like th- that. That is the two of us. I think we want to end the stream on something positive. Okay, fine. In that case, <laughs> let's let's um let's do the Lancia one. Let's do the Lancia one. Okay. Where, yeah. Where's this? Uh, okay, right here we go. This. So, what is this? Oh yeah, the classic Lancers. The Lan- Lancia is just an epic, epic. In, the reason I picked this is if if that if that picture doesn't make you happy, then um, then you're not a proper car fan. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say you are not human, but fine. I mean, they are some um, people just not into cars, so I, I'll, I'll allow them that. But yeah, if you're into cars, this picture. This picture should make you happy. It's just three of arguably some greatest cars ever made. Well, in terms of rally, definitely. Like the, uh, yeah. I mean, you have, you have the over here in the O35, the last, the only last non four wheel drive car to win the World Rally Championship. And then uh, over here, the Delta. We'll find it the O37. But sorry. anyway. Sorry. Oh my God. Yes, the O37. <laughs> I knew it. I was like, as soon as I said it, I was like, oh my God, he's going to pick me up on this. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting that one past me, usually. Yeah. <laughs> then over here we have um, Delta, which won the World Rally Championship five times in a row. I don't actually know. I'm not. I'm not a history buff on this, but I knew it won it. Won it a lot, and then yeah, it was. It's got the record from winning it the most times in a row, and and Lancia still to this day are uh, the. Uh, they have won more World Rally Championships than any other pe- any other car company. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely incredible. So yeah, the. Um, the Delta, the, the twin charged one, the one that had a supercharger and a turbocharger, that was insane. Yeah, uh, yeah 
The 07, the, the one car that beats the Audi Quattro two-wheel drive. Um, this is actually a very fascinating story, and I think uh, if we get around to it, I might do a little bit of a, like a deeper look into it. But essentially, like Lancia played so many trips that year to actually pull off that win. It, like you could see it as a bit of like, oh, slight skull didn't guard. actually win it. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't win it. Like, if you're being uber technical about it, I don't think they won it fair and square. But um, <laughs> they uh, they they definitely found some interesting uh, solutions to get around their uh, two wheel drive disadvantage. They but did it's it's weird because that I think that that O thirty seven. I can't decide where why I like it because I don't think it's traditionally beautiful. I don't think if you picked, if you showed it to like a, a non car nerd, I think they'd look at it and be like, that kind of looks kind of awkward. It's like boopy at the top, boxy at the bottom. I think we like it because you know of the history. I don't. I think you're right in the sense that it's not a, it's not a. I mean, of, even of of I mean of the three, the um, the um, Strasbourg is definitely the best looking. The O thirty seven is. If if you say if you go to a car a non car a non car person, I'd say that people would mistake the Delta for an old um, old Golf almost. And the O thirty seven. One hundred percent. I actually yeah. the first rally game I ever played with this car, I thought it was a weird Golf. I was like, why does <laughs> Golf look weird? <laughs> yeah, no, literally, yeah. You people could, would. I think from the I think from the front, the O thirty seven almost looks like an old BMW. Um, let me try to find a. Ooh. Like an old BMW 3 shout. series, maybe. Yeah, that is a good shout. But I think from the, from the side view, it does look... I think the side view looks very, very nice. It just looks... I don't know what it is about. It's just there's something about the side view of the O37 that screams, I, I, can, I can end you in a race kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. yeah, I think what was... So of the three, which would you take? Oh, don't make me choose. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that's that's the, that's the uh, I think that's the title of this article, right? Pick a classic lance. Pick a pick a, pick a classic lance here. Yes, you have to pick one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing is, I can't even I can't even do any like stupid things. Like I don't know which one's worth. So can't even pick the most expensive one. or get out of it that way. <laughs> Assume they're all worth equal amounts. <laughs> yeah. Stratos, Stratos is the one that's the most famous. It's got the pop-up headlights. Looks like a spaceship. It looks the coolest. Um, I don't know. I just really like that O thirty seven. Might pick the thirty seven. Pick the O thirty seven. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you picking? I think I would pick the Delta because people because. To me, like non-car people would just assume it's a golf and be like whatever, and then but car people were like, he knows that's a car, so I would go with the Delta. The, the, the Stratos is gonna, and also I live in London, so this, the the uh, the Delta to be the easiest to park. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think we were going for like if you had one to live with every day because then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Then possibly the, the, the one that looks like a hatchback, surprisingly, is the most practical one. Oh, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, and on that note, I think it is a uh, time to end the stream. So, thank you all very much for watching. Um, we'll be doing this, I think, what every two weeks, Red. Yeah, cool. Happy, happy that. So. Um, Thank you all very much for watching, and uh, see you in two weeks. And uh, if you're not already, please subscribe to uh, the, the EMG Clan uh, YouTube channel. Um, basically, that's where well, you you actually find um, you you you'll find um, a copy of a uh, copy of this of recording there. Um, and what and if you're not already, please follow me on Twitch at UG is here. And while you're following me, you might as well follow. Um, our other EMG member, Ancient Jedi One, he does a great, he does fantastic Pokemon work. So he's a great Pokemon battler. So you should definitely check him out. So thank you again, thank you much for watching, and uh, I'll see you all in two weeks' time. UG is yeah. no longer here.
as well. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys.